easy for me to just accept another job, right? Why has it been easy for me, not been easy for me, to simply change from quiet quitter to someone actively disengaged? And I think it's really something that we can attribute to the pandemic also. In the bigger context of Vincent Union Bank, the pandemic has been nothing short of transformative. And I think that, this is one of my favorite quotes, by the way, from an Indian novelist, that the pandemic is truly a portal. For organizations like Union Bank, it was a time filled with fear, but surprisingly, our profits have tripled, quadrupled. And not only that, when we talk about engagement, so it's a bit, it's a bit small, but I want to share with you that in the 2022 mid-year engagement, we do, this twice. we do this twice a year. The bank registered an overall score of 4.46. This is out of five, right? Which is an increase from last year's 4.42. And our current target is actually 4.41. So we're getting people to be more engaged. And so I was, really surprised by this because you would think that with all the news of quite quitting, with all the news of remote work being inferior, quote unquote, to face to face, right? There are people who think that, that we are actually getting more engagement. And the reason I want to share this with you is the following talking points are really some of the stories of success that I want to share that have also resonated with me personally. Okay? So the first thing is, so back to my story earlier, one of the caveats of the 70% increase is if I transfer to this new company, I would have to report to work four days a week, as opposed to no days a week in Union Bank. Which leads me to the first important lesson. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, tanggapin na po natin. Let's put it into our hearts, okay? It's not nostalgic about the past. Remote work is here to stay. Clap if you agree. <laughs> Remote work is here to stay. But I have a caveat. Hybrid is the way forward. Because it also doesn't make sense that you never see people when you can. Does that make sense? One thing I want to share about the Union Bank success story, and I do call it a success story, is that we were one of the first in this area, in the Ortigas, because uh, my office is literally next door. Um, we were the first bank, at least, that I know of in this area to let people remotely or work remotely. There were other banks that really stayed on, and they shall remain nameless. Um, and that really proved to be a differentiator in terms of employee retention, satisfaction, and engagement. The other thing that I want to share with you is that earlier this year, around February, February, March, we were told that we would start going back to work. We would be going back to work as in going back to the office, not that we ever stopped working. So I was like, okay, let's try it. Our initial approach was report to the office 10 days a month, sounds fair, and you would, it would be up to you, that, that seems to be better, that it would be up to you to decide when you would be going to choose the days, right? And so we went to work, 10 days, I was super excited. If you can, can't already tell by now, I'm a super extrovert. So an extrovert in the pandemic, isolated. Thank you so much, I love you. <laughs> I have been suffering. Thank you for <laughs> helping with my microphone. So going back, talking about suffering, right? Put an extrovert, isolate him in a room, because I live alone with my two dogs. I was going crazy. 
And so when I was told, Carl, you can go back to the office now and see other people, I went wild, right? And I went to work. What do you think happened when I went reported to the, to the office? I kissed my table. I'm not a hygienic man. <laughs> I do not kiss furniture, how dare you? Huh? So I don't I didn't kiss the table, but I was so excited to see people. No one else was there. My meetings were still virtual. I'm sure some of you have experienced this. Go back to work, everybody! But let's have a virtual meeting. What's the point? Right? And so what I love about UniMac is that we have common sense. We realize that there's no use requiring people to go to work 10 days if they don't need to go to work. So I go to work when I'm needed. Like I went to work today for this, right? Otherwise, I would still be in my underwear. Probably a decent top for my Zoom calls today, okay? So that's the thing. But hybrid, of course, still makes sense. Second, much ado is, there is much ado about culture, right? Culture this, culture that. We love culture. My problem with culture is how do you touch it? How do you how do you measure it? How do I know that I'm creating a culture? How do I know that I'm not just making posters and putting them on walls? How do I know that I'm not just having parties? So ladies and gentlemen, I have a quick and easy guide. It's not on my screen, but think about this as an HR practitioner. Number one. Whew, Enough sa na yung maglakad sa stage. Usually Zoom calls na lang. First, ask yourself, what do you make your employees accountable for? Because if they're not made accountable when they go against what you see as ideal company culture, then that leads you to two. What do employees get away with? If they get away with stuff, there's no stopping them from doing it, obviously. And then third, what do they get recognized for? And recognition can come in many, many, many forms. It doesn't always need to be money, but the money is pretty good. It doesn't always need to be money, it could be recognition. Personally, we really find we have a Viber group in HR called Yeh Tuesday. And we just flex each other's achievements. As often as we can, and that works. You know, sometimes it's TikTok contests, sometimes it's singing contests. That's why we talked about nuanced rewards and recognition practices. Something else that I wanna share with you is the fact that I'm here today. I was not invited by name. My boss was actually invited. She's, her name is Michelle Rubio, some of you probably know her, Chief HR Officer of Union Bank and one of the top 10 most influential HR leaders in the Philippines. They also have to say that. The fact that she sent me here on her behalf tells you the kind of leader that she is. She lets others shine, right? She pushes people to do more than what is expected of them. And that is one of the values of Union Bank. Matches. More, better, greater. And Michelle Rubio is an example of a leader who makes the culture real? So think about that. Who are the leaders that exemplify, that make your values real? We have programs that are nuanced, tailored fit to the culture of your people. Next, obviously, being able to pivot is powerful. I think it was Charles Darwin who said, it is not the most intelligent nor the strongest of a species that survives. It is the one who is most adaptable to change. Who said it? I give you one million points, ma'am. I will give you a jacket of Union Bank. So, uh, definitely think about this. And Agile, we're big fans of Agile. When we talk about Agile, it's not just a buzzword for us. Specifically, the concept of the minimum viable products and two-week iterations. I'm very proud to say that in Union Bank, even HR is agile, it's not just IT. So for instance, when we realized that going back to the office wasn't quite working for us, 
it didn't take us six months, it didn't take us three months, it just took us less than a month to realize this, and we iterate, we change, we fail fast, we fail forward. Next, ooh, ooh, I'm so big on this one, okay. Work-life boundaries, ladies and gentlemen, so important. Work-life boundaries have blurred. Who here, during maybe let's say the first year of the pandemic, first year of lockdowns, who here felt more stressed with work? Raise your hand during the pandemic. Thank you, <laughs> right? It's like, why did work multiply? Why did magically all my meetings appear? It wasn't like that when I was at the office, right? At the office, I had time to Facebook. I, at the office, I had time to take two hour lunches. And now even my lunch at home is challenged, right? So this is the thing, right? Remote work might seem like the perfect opportunity to live up, live up your life, right? But it's precisely because you can't separate, it's hard to separate work from home. And this was something that was hard learned, hard earned at the Union Bank, that we have needed to be very articulate, very outgoing, not really outgoing, very specific about what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. For instance, something that I was guilty of, I would send emails at 1 a.m. because that's when I was productive. And I would say, eh, I don't expect you to reply. So don't mind me. Until I was the one receiving emails at 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. And I was like, even if you don't expect me to reply, I am now bothered by an email in my inbox. So a really simple example, but I think those little things, A, are what makes a culture, you know, real, and B, that accumulates to an overall mental, emotional effect on the person. And I'm not gonna stand up here and say there are universal rules. It's really a team to team, relationship to relationship kind of thing, right? So what works for you works for you. What's important is that you don't make assumptions about your team and what works for them. Sounds good? Okay. Uh, shifting also to a more output-based approach. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe it took us all this time to realize that output-based productivity just makes so much more sense. That I do not need to be at the office 10 hours if I can produce the work of one week in two hours. Maybe I can go to the mall and not be judged for enjoying myself if I am a skilled employee. As opposed to, and I've been here for real in the past, I was an efficient employee, right? I did uh, eight hour shift work in two hours. What will my manager do 10 years ago? Give me more work, because you're so efficient, Carl. Let's punish you with more work. I didn't last in that set, right? And I'm sure many of you wouldn't. So again, shifting to output based empowers the organization and the individual to make better decisions for himself, for herself, and the work that is expected of them. Last few points before I completely run out of breath. Leverage technology for both productivity and genuine human connection. Please, I hope that we stop demonizing technology as the enemy of the human race because it can be our friend. If you've heard of Trello, if you've heard of Jira, if you've heard of you work day sometimes, right? There's so many things that we can leverage to make our lives easier. We don't have to be on it, right, the whole time. It doesn't have to be so crushing, but let us make, my plea is this, let's make nuanced, thoughtful decisions about how to, about how to leverage technology. I, for one, would rather attend virtual Zoom parties with HR than have to go, because I live in BF Paranaque, by the way, shout out to Southeast. Uh, <laughs> I, I do not want to go to Ortigas for a 30-minute lunch, right? So again, it's not black and white. Last couple of things, the post-pandemic workplace, 
must reflect health, well-being, right, and safety as top priorities in its design. So, for instance, if you've ever been to, by the way, who here uses the Union Bank app? I love you so much. Can you give yourselves a round of applause for using one of the digital banks of the country? Uh, I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> so, if you've ever been to one of our branches recently, uh, you will see that it doesn't look like a bank anymore. It looks more like an orange Starbucks. And that was by design. We didn't want people to have to be, you know, so close to each other. And this is what we mean. After the pandemic, gosh darn it, ladies and gentlemen, let's learn from it. Right? Let's learn from the pandemic. And that's what I want to close with. This is the complete quote that I want to add, right? So, Arundhati Roy said, the pandemic is a portal, right? A gateway. And we can choose to walk through it dragging the carcasses of our prejudice, right? Our data banks and dead ideas, or we can walk through it lightly, with little luggage, ready to imagine another world, and ready to fight for it. Thank you for your time today. I hope it gave you something of value.